Okay, yeah, Martha. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's start. Uh, before we start the bioinformatics course, is there any issue regarding your uh, midterm exam? Uh, uh, ini sih lebih ke ini apa maksudnya kemarin agak agak prob ada ya maksudnya workflow nya ada beberapa lah yang scriptnya masih belum jalan nanti mau coba masih debugging juga pak. Okay, so you still working on that, right? Yeah, pak. So oh, any other difficulties from others? Any other issues or challenges? Make sure you write your technical paper using LaTeX because we use it for paper publication, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, so today we will continue our learning regarding the pipeline, but I will start to introduce next flow. Uh, Sinta and Jacqueline will continue the snake mate, but in parallel, we will learn about next flow. Uh, so next flow is quite famous nowadays, especially in Spain and in Europe. Uh, next flow built a very big community uh, to campaign regarding the fair principle in genomic, uh, functional genomic pipeline. They want the pipeline to be findable, accessible, Okay, uh, some, some people call it fair principle, okay? So next flow is actually a library, very easy to use, and it's very active. If you see in YouTube, uh, their community is very active. Every year they have a conference, okay? Next flow, bioinformatics. So they have this is their uh, playlist uh, every year they con they they change this playlist yeah wait I think so this is their official uh, official YouTube channel you should. Uh, subscribe to this channel, okay? Because every year they have a new content, new conference, and they share each other between bioinformatics and very active compared to SnakeMate, compared to other pipeline framework, okay? So we will spend more time on this. Uh, this is comparable to SnakeMate, but even better because their community is active and if you see papers published using Nextflow, I think it's growing very fast. If you see in Met, uh, Bio or, or uh, Bio Arsif, there's a lot of paper regarding uh, pipeline uh, reproducing using the Nextflow, okay? So let's start learning Nextflow. Uh, the website is at the nextflow.io. Can you open it? So it's a workflow system, just like SnakeMate. Uh, in the community, there's so many next uh, workflow framework. But Nextflow is very specific for scalable and portable and reproducible uh, workflow, okay? Especially on scientific workflow, not only in genomics. Some people use it for other scientific uh, workflow like physics or operational research or other things. Okay, so Nextflow community is very active, highly active, regular meeting, event, podcast, YouTube, and they they introduce fair principle to make sure that all people who are doing genomic uh, bring the fair principle. Okay, so Nextflow is actually very easy to use. It's not like SnakeMake because so many Python library dependency, also some uh, dependency to Mamba or Corba, Corda. Nextflow is just like Java application. So quite easy to install and to run. I hope during this session, 
you can install in your machine or you can use GitHub code space or Git pod for installation. Okay. So next flow introduce like other uh, workflow introduce what so called process and channel. Okay. So it's like a script, but implementing process and channel. Process is independently executed uh, task or code, yeah? And the only way to communicate uh, is between, uh, between process is through channel in next flow. So think of process as a task and channel as a communication bridge or uh, and to communicate between process. Take a look on this. If you are not familiar with the language, yeah? It's quite different with Python. This language is called Groovy. Yeah. It's not hard to learn language. So don't worry if you learn Python and then you want to use Groovy. Groovy and Python is the same human like language. Yeah. So let's see here script parameters. So params is the object is prepared by the Netflow runtime. And then you say query and DB. And then you define process by making a function, yeah? So what is this? It's a blast function. Input is query and DB. Output is the text file, okay? And then this is the blast instruction that they uh, use it. It's like a common line. Blast P is calling program called blast P minus DB. And DB is like the parameter. And cat is a Unix common line, okay? So in this code, there is two process, plus search, and then extract top hits, okay? And all of this process will be defined by this workflow, will be used by this workflow. So you have to create workflow function, and then def uh, the channel, you create the channel, Okay, and then blast search, and then extract topic uh, process. Okay, so inside this workflow, it will utilize these two tasks or process. Okay, so in this example, you can sense how to write workflow in Nextflow. Okay, so when we they execute the workflow, uh, here you can see Unix command line. You can call any code actually, and you can execute any abstraction like Python. You can run Open Grid Engine, Unify Grid Engine, yeah. Because inside the process is just command or script. What you execute in that command or script is is many things in 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 operating system you can execute, yeah. So if you install Open Grid, you can execute inside the process the command line to run the Open Grid. So it's very flexible design. So uh, if you have a Flux framework or other framework listed here, you can just simply execute using your uh, next flow. That, this make it uh, very flexible and developer like it, bioinformatician like it. And the scripting language is groovy. It's kind of Java, Java style scripting. So we can say Groovy is a Python of Java. Yeah. So Python like script for Java. So the name is Groovy. Yeah. It's not hard to learn during this. Uh, when you learn Nextflow, you will get the Groovy introduction. If you need some tutorial on Groovy, you can go to, uh, go to the Groovy programming language uh, Wikipedia. And then you can take a look here. Uh, usually programming language has its own website like Groovy Lang. And inside this website, you can learn uh, some features of the language. You don't have to understand everything in Groovy. Yeah. Uh, what you need to understand is just how to define function, how to make a loop, how to make a if then, uh, uh, if then else selection or uh, basic language features, okay? Maybe you have to spend one day to just read the documentation, try the code, yeah? Or if you want to install Groovy in your uh, laptop, you can do, yeah? 
just spend time with Groovy. So you will be familiar to read pipeline written in Groovy for next flow. Okay, that's the overview. Okay, so now let's move to installation. So you can try in your own Git pod or your uh, GitHub code space. So because it's a Java application, yeah? So you need to have a Java uh, runtime and, uh, and GDK or SDK in your machine. If you use Gitpod or uh, GitHub code space, yeah? Uh, usually you have to check whether they have a Java or not. If they have Java, when you say Java version, it will give you the, if you give, give you the information. So let me try my machine, okay? So if I say Java minus version, okay, I will, I'm asking the operating system, is there any Java installed? Or oh, Java 17.081, okay? I already installed it. I, I forget when, but Java is already installed in my machine, yeah? So if you don't have Java installed, then you have to install, yeah? Start using this SDK man in Unix or in Linux. And then once you install the SDK man, you can install the SDK Java, install Java uh, 17, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In my case, I already have Java, so I don't have to install. And then after you install Java, you just uh, install Nextflow using this command. Yeah, you can copy this command and then pass into your terminal if you use Mac. If you use GitHub code space or if you use Git, Git pod, you can just pass this into the uh, command prompt. Make sure you know the location when you pass it because it will download the next flow executable. Okay. So after you uh, download, then you uh, make next flow ex executable using this command and you move the file, executable file, into your uh, path. Why you have to move this? Because you don't want to depend on specific folder. So anywhere in your machine, if you call nextflow, yeah, you will get it. Let's say nextflow minus version. Oops, nextflow dot minus version. Okay, this is in my root uh, directory. But if I move to my nextflow. Folder, I can also call next flow minus V. Okay. So everywhere I can call next flow. Once you install, if you want to update next flow, you can just say next flow self update. Let's say uh, next flow is updating the version. Yeah. Uh, you need to download. But this, this one in my machine is the latest version. Okay. So after you install Nextflow, you can check Nextflow info. So this command will give you information what version of Nextflow you have, when you create it, okay? Uh, what is the system of your operating system and what is the runtime of Groovy and OpenGTK. So everything you need to know about the runtime is already here. And everything else is just Nextflow command, okay? So Nextflow is a... Java program, so it next flow minus H is help file. Let me show. So there is an option means that after you type next flow, you can minus C to C configuration file, minus D, minus H, minus, if you want to exit, minus key, yeah? So if you want to see the version, minus V, yeah? So there's some command. You don't have to memorize this old command, like a next flow clean, next flow clone, next flow config, next flow console, blah, blah, blah. If you forget, then just run again, next flow dot help, yeah? To see all of the available command. Okay. So, I hope you don't have problem like in Snake Make for installation because it's very easy to install. But the tricky part here during the installation is you need to have Java, the right version, which is 17 up. And you need to have, uh, I mean, 
uh, the next flow executable download. Later, if you want to update, you just say next flow update, self update. Okay. So the first command in next flow is uh, next flow run. Yeah. And next flow team provide you some hello world. The script is already there in the next flow. So you can say, just say next flow hello. Yeah. Next flow run hello. It will download the code from GitHub. Next flow IO slice hello. And then uh, say hello word in many languages like ciao word, hello, bonjour, hola, etc. Okay. Another, so next flow, first command that you understand today is next flow run and then the name of the uh, workflow. Okay. The name of the workflow is hello. But what about if you want to make your hello world script by yourself? Okay. So let's go to this first script. Yeah. Let's run this first script. So you need to have your uh, Visual Studio Code installed. Okay. So let's write a file called tutorial.nf. Okay. So this is the next flow tutorial. So let's understand this code. So I said I want to make a parameter called string. Just pass here. Params. Okay. Because next flow is running on Java and Ruby. Means that these params, they already have object of this, but you attributed the object that you have a string called here, hello world. And then you define two process. I just copy this process. So the first process is split letters, yeah? So the input, uh, no input, just output. Okay, if you call this process, it will output, okay? Uh, split it text, uh, split it characters. If you give the letters and then it will split, okay? And then the second process, the input is X. You need to define the path X as an input of this process. And the output is standard output, std out, yeah? std out. So it will cat, cat is a Unix command. Uh, it will cat to the screen some output, yeah? So this workflow is very simple workflow. If you give some input, then uh, it will uh, split, okay? So to define the workflow, just say, uh, make a workflow, okay? Splitters, this is the name of this first process, and then flatten the output, and then convert. This is the second process, and then view, okay? Just save this one. Uh, and then goes to your command line uh, to see. Okay, I have tutorial.nf. And I just say next flow, run tutorial.nf. Okay. So it will launch this tutorial. There is two process, splitters and convert output. How we define these two process work together, we create a workflow, okay? And you see this workflow, splitter, and this is, uh, this character is like a Unix command to say the output will go to flatten. Flatten is predefined workflow inside next flow, yeah? And then convert to uppercase, and then view, okay? So I never wrote flatten. I never wrote workflow called flatten and view, but it must be provided by the next flow, yeah? So this is the uh, output of this flow, okay? So what is this flow? Given a parameter called hello world, please split the word and make it uppercase, okay? This is the output. But why next law is quite special to do these very simple things because you can do it in any language, but why, uh, let's say I have two process, convert to upper, 
and then uh, splitter, right? So let's say I modify one task, okay? I just copy past here. I, I modify this one. I put here, okay? It's quite different with my first one because my first one is cap. Cap is a unique. Zero from beginning. The good thing in next flow, if I run this again, I can expect that you don't have to run the task number one split letters because nothing changes there. So next flow is catching up all of the all of the process. Yeah. So if you see the next flow code here, it this is all of the folder. It catches all of the process inside the next flow. So if you run it again like this, you can see, yeah. Uh, it doesn't change if it's already uh, caged, yeah? So it will uh, reuse the cage, yeah? But it will reuse the splitter, but this one is changed, yeah? So it will run the new one, yeah? Okay, but if I say, that's resume, yeah? I don't want to change, uh, I don't want to rerun. It will rerun the original, the previous workflow. Okay, but remember, you have to use minus resume. Means that I change some code. But if you have the case of the running task or running process before, please use it. That's why you say here case, and this is case. Okay, if you're done with this, you can change. Uh, go again to this one. So. If I say parameters in next flow, so here, this is params.str, hello world, means that in this code, I define this one. But what about I want to input from the, from the, uh, okay, from the command line. So I just run this one. So what is this? Okay, next flow, run tutorial and F. So because I say params.str, I can use dash dash str and define the and modify the, the the str parameters. Okay. Okay. In Visual Studio, the good thing in Visual Studio, you will also have terminal here. Okay. So make sure you test your next flow is available. Okay. And then you can run that again here. Okay, every next flow, next flow execution, it will take the log file here. Yeah, you can see the log file of next flow, what it does. Okay, so if you say, I just say this, assume, it will cage, look on the cage, run again the workflow, but because there is no changes, in the code, it will take the output from the case. Okay. Okay, that's all uh, for this uh, your first script. Okay, so it's not hard. And next, you have to uh, read the documentation for script. Yeah. So if you use Groovy. Maybe uh, I will introduce you Groovy. It's a very powerful programming language. When I was in Samsung, we used Groovy for IoT because the IoT engine that we built is using Java and Groovy is like scripting language for Java. Yeah, so you don't have to compile. If I say scripting language, you don't have to compile. Java code, you need to compile, make it binary and then execute. But Groovy is like scripting language, yeah? So Nextflow script is extension of Groovy programming language, and you need to have a Groovy basic, yeah? So 
not too many things you have to understand in Groovy. First, you need to just learn how to print something, yeah? So let's say here in your next block of code, okay? If you say here, green line, save it, and then you run it again. So, because I say print line, print a line, yeah? And then I say hello world here, so it print here, hello world, okay? So in Groovy, if you want to print something, you just print line, okay? But what about if you want to print date or print uh, variables, yeah? Like say you say x equal to one, and then you want to print x, or x equal to new Java util date, the good thing in Groovy, you can call Java Util, yeah? So because it's a Java base, so if I say, uh, if I say here, uh, x equal to, let's say I say date equal to, uh, and then I say date now, okay? And then I save. And then I run again. I expect it will not rerun the, the process, but it will give me a date. Okay. That today is Saturday, May 4th, at this time. Okay. So Groovy can call Java Util. And Java Util is a very huge library. You can just use ChatGPT, anything you want to do with Java Util. Yeah. And you can print. What about if you want to make a list? You can just make a list like this, okay? And then you can print list at the index zero, okay? You can print the list size. You can make a maps like data structure. If you need a data structure, you can make a map. Map is a, like a dictionary, okay? Uh, sometimes people say hash table or key value. It's a data structure that mapping a key to a value, okay? Like bread. Is the key value is 100 pip yeah. and like this. Okay, so you can make data structure maps in Groovy and other data structure. Okay, you can print, you can make assignment, you can make conditional execution. Okay, you can define string, you can operate string like in Java. Okay, so. You can perform regular expression. Please make sure that you spend time on these features that they already big because some of these features you will need when you uh, write a uh, workflow in in Groovy language. Yeah. If this is not enough, then you have to go to Groovy programming language website. Oh. Groovy lang. Usually, a uh, language website provides you uh, learn, yeah? Or sometimes it provides you books for free, yeah? So if you want to be an expert in Nextflow, you have to make sure that you don't have problem with Groovy. And learning Groovy, the fastest way is using ChatGPT. Take a book, yeah? And then look on the table of content, uh, read the chapter, and make sure you can reproduce the code using your beloved chat GPT. OK, so next. OK, I uh, already introduced you this uh, script. I hope you spend time. One week is enough to learn about this uh, language called Groovy, yeah? Don't worry, uh, learning new languages is fun. Like if you visit new countries and then you learn some few words and you start talking to them, the people there, you will love it, yeah? Uh, imagine the process is like that. Just talk. If this, there is a mistake, let's say you write the code uh, print and, and then you miss this one and then you run it or you save it, of course, it will give you some message error, okay? Just like if you go to other country and you mention some word and people say, oh, that's wrong. This is not the way we mention that word, okay? So compiler is knowing better than you. 
will go unknown method invocation. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, you can just say and and then save it again. Okay, and then you can learn. Okay, let's back again to this Groovy tutorial. The next is you have to understand the abstraction, the concept inside Nextflow. The first concept is introduced in this documentation is process. What is process? Process is your basic processing or primitive, yeah, to execute. Okay, so we wrote the process. If you want to have a process, let's say, say hello world, okay, how can I modify my code? So I go here, I make a process, say, hello next flow. I like to use it to learn it. Okay. Let's say like this, just, okay. And how you define later on here, of course you have to put here, right? So before here, split text. I just want to say hello. Okay, I put here, say hello. Don't forget this notation. This is UDIC style uh, to make sure that after this, do this, yeah? And save again, and then you can run again the workflow. Okay, you may ask question, why is it's like, uh, it's like taking some time for work uh, when you call it this program? Yeah. Because it's a Java, yeah? Java needs some memory management activation for the runtime, so it takes some time still, okay? But why nothing here in say hello? <laughs> it's just echo, yeah? So it's just echo, uh, put it in file. If you check in file, uh, usually somewhere in the folder, it will take uh, the, the file, okay? Because this is just like echo command in uh, command line. Just like you type this one into this command line, okay? Okay, you will see inside the file, uh, okay, there is a file uh, here, yeah, hello world, okay? This is the meaning of this one, write hello world in the file, okay? So what is the template or the definition of the workflow? First is a process and the name of the process. You can give some directives, yeah? some preparation and directive and then you have to define input if there is no input you just keep this input if only output you can define input and process input and process output and when and you put the conditional here and then the script okay script to be executed this is the example and the block script here is whatever you can do in the best script in here in command line Okay, let's say uh, if you have Blast, uh, Blast P, yeah, this is a program called Blast P or CAT. CAT is a, uh, a, a command line in, in Unix, in Linux, and Blast DB. Okay, so everything that you can write here, it can define as a script. Okay, so next question maybe you have. What about if I want to run a Python code? Okay. If you run a Python code, of course, there is, uh, let's say, Python and Python and the file name .py. Okay. You can just call it. But of course, to run Python code from Nextflow, you have to uh, know the, the, the term. Yeah. Uh, you just uh, how to run. What about if you use chat DPT? Maybe the data set is already there. Okay. Let me check if it can understand the next flow, yeah? 
I never do this from, but if is it error or successful, yeah. Uh, give the applause to ChatGPT, not to me. So write a uh, uh, next flow process to call Python script that implement hello world. Okay. okay. So first, you have to make this Python file. Okay. Hello.py. Let me try to make it here. Yeah. Hello.py. So because it's a Python code, then I just copy this code. Okay. So it's a Python code to say hello world. And then in this one, I say uh, process say hello. Okay. This is the script to execute. Yeah. So during this script, say I just copy this one. There's no input here, just output file. So let's go to the tutorial and then in this say hello. I delete the first one. Okay. It will output a file called output.txt and running the script. But you see here, the output of this Python hello.py is, and then this notation, say, put it in this file. Okay. So now I run again. I change hello world, so hello world not, must not be caged. Okay, there is a process called splitter. I don't need this one. I just delete this one first, yeah? Okay. I just want to make a hello world. Only one process. I don't need splitter. I don't need confer. I don't need flatten. Okay. Maybe I don't need this params. Okay, let's save it. Take some time to run the. Okay, there's an error. Executing say hello, what cost per terminate? Blah, 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 blah. A uh, command error can open file, no such file. Okay. Why is not getting this file? Okay. It must be about the location of the file is not uh, recognized by, okay. So because maybe the next flow file is in different location, it doesn't take this, uh, okay. Uh, so when I run this python.hello, python.hello.py, it doesn't get this one, yeah? But I can run it here. So the I assume the problem is uh, it is it cannot the next flow executable cannot find the file called uh, hello because the location is different okay need some uh, trouble shooting on that but it's not a big problem maybe you can commit the game here okay so let's say I say it. just give this hello uh, process. Okay. Uh, this one. Try in chat GPT. Yeah, next block cannot locate. Yeah. So maybe I have to change like this. 
Maybe. Okay. Where is the file? Tutorial file. Okay. I have to change this one. Python. How to. Hello. Okay, wait, wait. I need to find the part of my uh, give uh, Unix command. To see the current directory. Okay, PWD. I never memorized this one. Okay, so I can take this one. And then I go back here again, and then I add here. Oof. This save. Try again. Still, unknown method invocation trim Unix part side tutorial at F line 18. Okay, if you have which one is problem here. Maybe I forget to give the one. Line 19. Unexpected input, say hello. Maybe I forget to give this. Maybe decide is the way to learn. Oh, this one. Huh? Still problem. Okay, you can try yourself. It takes so long time to, to do that. Or maybe we can define like this, last try, yeah? Just say hello. So in reality, later on, oh, this is correct. So we don't usually write workflow from beginning, but we improve existing workflow, okay? So after you learn about this process, please try this tutorial. Uh, we will continue next week, yeah? Uh, follow this tutorial. But later, uh, there's a website called NF Core. Uh, let me share with you. Okay. So NF Core is the repository of the whole community work pipelines. You can see here, there are 60 workflow release and under development 34, archived uh, is 11. So it's very active, right? like 
small arena sequencing analysis pipeline, a pipeline to simulate, okay? We will try some of them, yeah? And maybe in your uh, last uh, final semester, you need to pick one for you to reproduce in bioinformatics. So during the class, we will learn this tutorial Okay, we will continue to learn together this tutorial until it's complete. And next we'll have a website for learning. Every year they modify. This is the last one in year 2023. We will follow this too, yeah, together. So if you do later your pipeline with next flow, you will have no problem. Okay. For today, as an introduction, we uh I hope you can learn script and process. And next week, we learn channel, operator, workflow, modules, and et cetera. And we will reproduce this uh, 2023 tutorial together. OK? So that's it for today. Uh, please start to install. Make your Hello World like what I did before. And make sure you read documentation. Uh, in any framework, if you don't read documentation, you will spend too much time on, on problem solving. Yeah, if you have problem because you don't really understand how it works. So uh, we will make sure that we read the documentation, get the tutorial and able to reproduce NF Core. Okay, NF Core is very active. So if you work with Nano 4 or Illumina next generation sequencing, uh, there's so many uh, pipeline that you can reuse here, including the sample data that you can use. So hopefully we can we can uh, reproduce some of that. Okay, that's all for me for today. Is there any question? No, sir. Okay, good. So please try to install and get your first Hello World in Nextflow. You can install in your machine, but I don't recommend because uh, my machine is quite good. <laughs> this is how many? 32 gigabytes. Uh, you need uh, for genomic, I believe you need to have uh, run it this in the GitHub uh, code space. Okay, you can use GitHub code space. Okay, please try this one, or you can run in Gitpot. Okay, Gitpot.io is the same. It's the same environment. It's just browser based. Yeah, so you can try Gitpot and uh, GitHub code space. You can choose one of them uh, for your next flow exploration. The good thing here. Uh, you can pay as you go if you need to run a long pipeline for your uh, master degree research and then you can just pay here without buying uh, expensive PC or server. Okay, that's all. So please continue your midterm exam and see you next week. Learn again the next flow. And if Sinta and Jacqueline and if I didn't have a snake make running, they can also show the pipeline together with the next flow. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, bye.